So today we get to talk about what programming languages are out there and which ones you all would like to learn. Today, I would like you all to recognize something very fundamental about the technology community, which is that for all that we like to pretend that we are scientists and logical and Vulcan-like, in reality, we're more like Kirk battling an alien dinosaur. Everyone has feels. They have so many feels about all of the things that they like and don't like in technology, and none of them can provide a good answer other than cuz. So be aware that, that all of the stuff that I'm saying today is made of crap. That's true of just about everything anyway, but I'm going to tell you my opinion on programming languages, on the kind of people that work with them, on the best tools for them, on their likely futures, on your best options when it comes to being in school and what languages to learn here, the likely progression that will give you the best career, and all of this is my opinion. I have a strong and well-founded opinion based on a lot of, of stuff that I've seen in tech, but it is absolutely subject to my personal biases and the, the people that I know in technology. If everyone that I know that codes Ruby is an asshole, I'm gonna like Python better. So that, that's just the way that it works, right? I'm gonna choose to, be, to use the tool that the people that I like tend to use. And anyone who tells you differently is either a fool or a liar. It's just the way that it works. So you get to choose today by asking me questions as I go through some of the major programming languages, which community of people that you would like to belong to. You, you, we're, we have the Alliance and the Horde as, as groups in here, which I still freaking love. Um, but you're going to be Alliance and Horde with a lot of other people, too. So you're, you're, going, you're signing up to hate specific people when you pick tools out. And it's just part of the fun, OK? Um, you'll you'll self-identify, and those will be people that you work with. And they'll be colleagues. And you will hopefully have a great time learning whatever tool you choose. So. I'm going to do this by asking, I, I have a list of the programming languages in the back of my head that I want to address, but I'm going to ask you all to start me off by asking questions. What are the languages you want to know about, any language you want to know about, as in terms of their value to your career, their likely use in the future, how soon they'll be sunsetted, and what you can do with them? So raise your hands and ask me questions. Yes? Um, you were talking briefly about JavaScript yesterday. JavaScript, it okay. Is very important. Is that something you feel like is going to be fundamental? Mm -hmm. That is an excellent question. JavaScript is a very, very good language to learn right now. JavaScript has gotten nothing but more important over the last three to five years, I would say. And the reason for that is JavaScript is one of the primary tools that people are using for responsive web design as well as mobile development. Mobile development is part of what is driving the rise of JavaScript as a major programming language. JavaScript used to be a joke. Like six or seven years ago, people made fun of people that programmed in JavaScript. Now we're like, dude, do you know when the next class is coming up? Because I can probably go to that with you. <laughs> you know. So JavaScript is, is getting more and more important. And if you want to do mobile development, which we're going to talk about in future weeks, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Specialize in jQuery. If you get a chance to, that's going to help a lot. jQuery is a set of plugins and a library in JavaScript. Other questions about JavaScript? Yes. Uh, Java full stack. Java full st when you say Java full stack, are you talking Java the program? You guys understand Java and JavaScript are unrelated. Yeah. Okay. Java full stack, that's like when you can build a mm -hmm. complete program with nothing but Java. Okay, Java the so Java full stack, I don't recognize the phrase that you're using, but I'm thinking you're talking about Java the programming language? Yes. Okay, Java the programming language is an object oriented programming language. That's the one I started with. And yes, I can tell you lots of stuff about Java. Um, full stack is something that we apply to any language or any uh, technology, more likely a framework or application that can be used to do a lot or all of a thing. So Java, the programming language, good question, is frequently chosen as a language taught in colleges and universities. It is a great starter language. Um, a lot of people are howling right now in the back of my head, but Java was, I think, brought out in 1995. And it is a, um, it is a complete object-oriented programming language, an OOP, OK? I learned Java starting, I don't know, maybe 1998, 1999, um, a little bit in, in college. And then I really kind of got into it more when I got into grad school, um, well, into my PhD program um, at University of Michigan. And the reason why was because uh, Java is, as an object-oriented language, it was very supported by a lot of academics, a lot of scientists. Um, there are a lot of programming, there are a lot of libraries that have been implemented in Java for you to do things like 
uh, scientific simulation, computational simulation. It's one of my academic specialties. And so when, you, when I think about programming math, I think of it in Java. It is, um, it is to programming language, languages what LaTeX is to word processing. You find it a lot in academia. People can get snobs, can get snobby about it. Um, a lot of people make fun of it. But the truth is, is that it is a very solid basis from which to take the fundamentals of object-oriented programming and take them out to your next language. Does that help answer at least a little bit of what Java is for? You will not as often find Java in the hot new startups now. But that's okay, because once you know Java, you can pick up whatever they're teaching in the hot new startup really fast. Okay, any other questions about Java? Okay, what's the next programming language you want me to talk about? Yes? Python. Python, hell yeah, let's talk about Python. I love Python. I'm in the middle right now of learning Python. I'm maybe an intermediate-ish Python developer. There are some, there are excellent things about Python when it comes to you folks learning them here. First, there is a super strong local Python community in Seattle. It's called Puget Sound uh, Python User Group. The Puget Sound Python Users Group is awesome. I know the folks that run it. I'm part of it. And I am more than happy to make introductions around here. I often go and mentor and coach for them. Um, I, I am, I'm not as good at Python as a lot of the folks there, but I've got a lot of ability to help them with career and mentoring and coaching, so I, I kind of trade off a little bit there. You will often, by the way, find yourself trading your good skills in one area to learn in other areas, and I love doing that. It's a great way to keep your career going and keep your interests and your skills strong. Python is, it can be written as an object-oriented language, but it is not as much object-oriented as it is its own weird class of language. You can use it for lots of different stuff. It is the Swiss army knife of languages, and many people would say that Perl actually was the, the, the Swiss army knife, but the truth is Python has more replaced Perl for the purposes for which Perl used to be used. Do you guys know what Perl is? P-E-R-L? Yeah, yes. What, what does Perl stand for? What does Perl stand for? Somebody tell me. Google it if you don't know it. Yes, but what does is, what is Perl stand for? What, is it, what does it stand for? Say it again. Practical Extracting and Reporting Language. Excellent, yes. It is, um, it is a nerds language written for, by, and of the nerds. And it is a very handy, simple uh, tool to use, but Python has in many ways replaced Perl for the, the simple use that the folks that created Perl used it for. I frequently mostly use it as a scripting language. When I say scripting, what am I talking about? As opposed to programming or web dev, when I say scripting, what am I talking about? Scripting is something that's already established. Mm -hmm. Scripting uses commands that are already established as opposed to building programs from scratch. Beautiful. Succinct and lovely. It is hacking crap together that already exists to make something work fast. Don't let anybody tell you it's something other than that. Scripting is just making something work with the tools you already have on hand. And the ability to do that is extremely valuable in any situation where you have to cover more than one job or technological function. People often joke about trying to replace themselves with a script. It's not a joke. Replace everything that you do. Think about replacing everything that you do with a script if you can. Replace your activity online. Replace your email. Replace anything that you can automate in your computational world with a script, and you are well on your way to both being a very good programmer and a hacker. That's what you do, is start replacing stuff with scripts as fast as you can. Get the humans out of the way, and then monitor the process. So Python, I think one of the reasons why Python is a language that people tend to use for stuff like that is first, the community, I personally think, is not only the single most welcoming one to outsiders, there's a very established pattern of being welcoming to outsiders, um, but the community is very careful to stay open to women, to minorities, to, um, to queer people, to just about any one of the, the initials or identities you can possibly imagine, Python has a user group that is devoted to making sure that those folks have a home and a place to learn from. Like every community, there are always problems, but I personally love the openness of this community and their willingness to teach. Show up and somebody will start teaching you really fast. Um, 
I, I like that, and I also find that that openness has made it rapidly adopted, much more rapidly adopted than most other programming languages are, and it's just growing at this point. There's a huge market share, and it's just increasing for that language. Okay, uh, does that answer your questions about what Python is and where it's coming from? I could go into the depths of what Python is, but for most of you that have never laid hands on a programming language, it, it helps, I think, more to, to just understand the kind of people that like to use it and see if you want to be part of that community. There are, there are the scientists and the hackers and the nerds and the geeks and the, you know, all manner of tribes and technology, and many of them have different tools that they use. It's more about who you want to hang out with than what tool you're going to use. All right? Any other questions about Python? Okay, what's the next programming language you want to know about? Yes? What's the difference between C, C Sharp, and C++? What is the difference between C, C Sharp, and C++? That is an excellent question. C is the original language written in 1970-something, something, something, I think. And it is an object-oriented... Uh, okay, so I know crap all about C. I know C++, and I really know C Sharp. I don't know... I, so C++ and C Sharp were written to expand on the original functions of C, and I do know that the major reason why they were written, um, by the way, C Sharp is the implementation of C that Microsoft did. That's the .NET version of what's going on. C Sharp .NET, by the way, is what I coded in when I was at LIPS and at Halo at Microsoft. Um, and C++ is the open source version of that. C used to have huge issues with memory errors, memory leaks, and problems with um, what I think we would have called multi-threading back then. So C came first. Then cameth C++ and C Sharp to fix the memory issues with C and the huge quantities, if I recall correctly, of null pointer errors. So what's a null pointer? Anybody have a guess? Okay, it just means there's no there there. You're, you're trying to, to, to go get data or go and, and instantiate a variable or go try to find a piece of information that isn't there, and so it horks a null pointer error, a null pointer exception back at you, okay? Um, and those things are more easily caught in a C++, C Sharp, or Java environment. By the way, Java is sort of a version of C as well. C is the granddaddy of the object-oriented programming languages. All right. Does that sort of help a little bit? C Sharp um, differs from C++ in that you will find, if I recall, templating in C Sharp which is not only much more fully implemented, but easier to use and standard in the API than C++. C++ has a bigger community and you will find a lot of mobile development backend, I'm, I'm thinking really hard here, mobile development backend in C++, as well as Objective-C in the uh, iPhone and the iOS area. C++ you're more gonna find in Android, also Java and Android, yes. C++ and Java and Android development, that's for the mobile folks, and then C, Objective-C in iOS. Yes, okay. Does that help a little bit? Objective-C is also, I believe, what they call a procedural as opposed to a object-oriented language. Wait, procedural? Whichever. Okay, does that help explain at least a little bit? Did I just confuse you more? I'm going to make you all Google C and C++ and C, and C Sharp anyway in just a little bit, so. Okay, C Sharp is the, is, if you want to go in a direction where you are specialized in a language, C Sharp is not a bad way to go. It is going to be very much Microsoft technology oriented. Um, so if you want a more open version of that, maybe learn C++ because you'll be able to convince anyone who knows C Sharp that if you know C++, you can pick up C Sharp really, really fast. That is a, dial that is a dialect difference between Tennessee and Georgia, not between the Bronx and Louisiana. Make some sense? Okay, what is the next language you'd like to know about? Ruby. What's that? Ruby. Ruby and Ruby on Rails probably, excellent. So Ruby um, is a, a fully featured language that has a, the, the, the biggest difference around what Ruby is is that it is really specifically developed for web development. And Ruby on Rails is the web application framework that's built in Ruby that is specifically set up to create and push websites as well as web applications. Ruby is a community of people that are also, I find, really welcoming to outsiders. You will find, I think, and, and I have a clear Python over Ruby preference, but that doesn't mean that I don't know how to do a little bit of Ruby coding. And I've done some, some work in Ruby before. Um, Ruby tends to be very friendly to the uh, 
the Linux operating system. There's a lot of stuff built for it right now. And if you understand and specialize in Ruby, you can get up and running fast in web applications. Python is often so big um, and, and so scattered that they give you a, a really big scaffolding and say, okay, go play. And Ruby will often say, here's the stuff that you can use, just use that. And it, and it tends to make going further faster as opposed to getting a broad base and then targeting one specific area. Does that make some sense in what you're doing? Um, I find that Ruby coders tend to be, um, they tend to be better at Ruby than Python coders are at Python. And I'm going to get shrill hatred for that, but um, Ruby is a smaller set of things to learn. So if you're good at it fast, you can become a master of Ruby faster than you can at Python. Does that make sense? Okay. There's also Ruby interest groups in the area. It's not as strong, um, but there's also, a, I think, a geographic element to this too. I think Ruby is stronger on the East Coast and in the Midwest than it is on the West Coast. West Coast, I think you just tend to find more Python out here. So if that makes sense. Do, I mean, is that, is that strange to hear that there are geographic preferences for tools? It often tends to be that uh, major companies in the area will determine their internal framework and it will have a ripple out effect among all of the small companies in the area. Since when you start a startup, what you do is you think to yourself, I know two buddies who are going to make a great co-founding team with me. And then you all get together over coffee and you say, okay, what's the programming language we all know and can get going in fast? Well, you know them because you worked on a team with them at Big Corp, right? And so you're going to use the Big Corp language that you used. You're going to roll out with the tools that you have right then. And that tends to be a rock candy effect. You start to isolate, you start to, to coalesce and create rock candy crystals around what you already know. It is an accretive process as opposed to an iterative process. Do, do you know what I mean by the difference between accretive as opposed to iterative? If you don't, look it up, because that's a good use for Googles. All right, does that explain what Ruby kind of is? Okay, smaller and you can get good faster. All right, what other programming languages? Uh, there's like eight billion of them out there, keep asking me. What's that? Swift, I know crap all about Swift. Okay, what's next? What is the difference between JavaScript and Java? That is a good question, and people are going to continue asking that because they, there was an unfortunate choice of, of naming for Java and JavaScript. JavaScript is a dynamic language used for front-end web development. Java is an object-oriented application development language. Java is what you do things like, um, like program the, the, the space shuttle with. And JavaScript is what you program NASA.com with. Does that make sense? Okay. Other questions? There are more programming languages out there. How many? Yes. PHP. PHP. That is an excellent question as well. PHP is a frequently taught academic language. Um, at PHP is the main language taught here at Seattle Central. There are a lot of security holes in PHP. It is a scripting language and used for web application development, as many of you folks know. WordPress is written in PHP. If, when you are coming out of this program, if you have a solid basis in PHP and you understand the security issues with PHP, you can do a great job building and developing WordPress plugins for companies. That's, that's a great career to have, okay? PHP is... It has a bit of a reputation on the internet, but the truth is is that we all write some PHP every once in a while because sometimes the nastiest, dirtiest, hackiest wedge in the door is the fastest way to get the job done. Sometimes PHP is that nasty, dirty wedge in the door. Uh, just be fixing the security holes all the time when you have that up and running. I mean, my site's in PHP. It's a WordPress site, so that's fine. Um, you will find a, a, a snippet of PHP uh, script out there to do anything. Somebody has written PHP for it. Most of the script kitties out there, and that is a term that we use in InfoSec to refer to somebody who doesn't really understand programming, but who goes and downloads scripts and points them at servers to see what works and what doesn't. Uh, most of the script kitties out there will be using PHP. All right. It is, a, it is a very good language to learn if you want to know what not to do, and I don't mean that as a hack on PHP. I mean it's a good language to learn if you want to really understand how other people really misuse the internet. 
And if you are a good PHP programmer, a really good one, then you'll start being able to get jobs doing things like building major web applications like WordPress. Okay? Does that explain kind of what PHP is? Um, I, I, it, truthfully, it's outdated. Um, it, it's outdated as, a, as, I would say, a language to learn at this point. If you had a choice between PHP and Python or Ruby, choose either Ruby or Python. Um, but, just like Java, I, mean, I don't have to use Java in my everyday life anymore, but I am very glad that I went through the process of learning it from end to end. And if that's your first language that you learn, go for it. Learn it and learn it all the way through and understand why it works the way that it does. Um, you will. There's not a lot of PHP community that I've really sensed. There could be more in other places in the country. So, yeah. Um, you, you will mostly find PHP coders around a different community, like uh, the WordPress meetup, where there's a lot of WordPress meetups. Okay, That's where you will find PHP coders. There's no specific, as far as I know, I mean, I'm sure there is, PHP meetups, but I don't know about a bigger community for that. And I'm sure that there are lots. I've got some really good friends, and I've done a lot of work in PHP before. Uh, just nothing's popping to mind in the Seattle area, I think. Okay, next, programming language. Yes? Delphi. Delphi, no idea. What's that? Visual Basic. Visual Basic. Excellent question. That is also a, uh, a Microsoft language. You'll see uh, Visual Basic VB.net is another one of the application development languages that came out of Microsoft. VB.net is also useful. You might think of it as a close cousin to Java. Um, maybe not. Maybe more like Pascal or Fortran. Um, I think. Where did Visual Basic come from? Somebody tell me where Visual Basic came from. That's where Wikipedia is for. From Microsoft. From Microsoft, yes. But where, what's the, what are the languages that it was descended from? Anyone looking at, at Wikipedia right now? Um, Visual Basic. From Basic. From Basic, yes. And it would have been part of Visual Studio. That's been Microsoft's suite for some time for development. What are, the lang what, what are the languages that Visual Basic came from? What's that? Best guesses? Okay, I'm going to make you all start looking some of this stuff in a, uh, up in a little bit because it's going to just, I, I would rather have you start to get used to the notion that computer languages are very, very much like human languages. Um, th that's what they are every language is a symbolic representation of a concept, right? So math, PHP, French, Mandarin, all of these things are just symbolic ways to represent a concept. And all languages are descended from other languages. You could think of C and C++ and C Sharp and Java as the Indo-European language family. Does that make sense? They all kind of come from the same place. There's <coughs> There's a background and a history to all of them. And the people that speak them think differently. They think in terms of the symbolic representation of the concepts that they're trying to convey. And that's why you find people that become tribes around languages. We're human beings. We, we, we group up. That's, that's what we do. So you find the kind of people that speak the language that you like and make sure and learn all of them, or at least a little bit of all of them as you can. But these are just languages like any other. You're just picking whether to learn French or German or Mandarin as a foreign language right now. They yes? Ruby with What's that? They combined Ruby with Basic. They combined Ruby with Basic. Beautiful. Sure. That's awesome. Someone created Esperanto. <laughs> all right. Any other questions about what this is all like? I want you to, to go through, and the rest of today, you're going to be picking out what languages that you want to learn. Any last questions? Um, yes? What would you recommend if the first language you what would I recommend if the first language you learned is JavaScript to learn more of JavaScript? Keep learning it. Go all the way through. Learn it. Program it. If you were if you were a full JavaScript developer, then you would be doing that. So keep going. Keep learning. Learn as fast and as long as you can. Last questions? Yes. 